Brian Shaw might be one of the world's strongest men, but does he have one of the world's strongest diets? Strong enough to keep him in the competition at 38 years old. We know that in order to be optimal from any perspective, you have to have minimally inflammatory foods and get adequate nutrients in the diet. Is Brian Shaw simply destroying his body with a poor diet and could a better eating regimen have kept him in the game for longer? Let's take a look. Starting out with meal number one, what I've got going is I have uh, six ounces of bison patties. Trifecta makes this super easy because these are already pre-cooked. So what I have to do is, uh, is just cut these up. Like I said, six ounces of those. And then I have uh, five eggs with that. So I just dump the eggs in, scramble that all up together. On top of that, I will have uh, fruit and also uh, five waffles. So this is a pretty enjoyable meal to get the day going and uh, tastes pretty good. So I always kind of look forward to starting my day with this. All right, so we got the eggs going. Those are looking great. And uh, while those are going, I'm going to uh, get the waffles in the oven, get those cooking. Recap of breakfast real quick. Uh, we got the eggs and the bison patties. Um, my fruit today, I'm going with uh, blackberries. So this is approximately one cup of blackberries and then um, uh, the five waffles that we cooked up. From the perspective of food choices, if the quality was there, we'd actually be in a pretty decent spot. Unfortunately, quality is not there. And one thing I always get curious about is, are these bodybuilders, strongmen, powerlifters actually eating this, you know, lower quality supermarket food? Do they simply not know any better? Or, you know, do they secretly have a stash of Amish food in their fridge? I don't know that. Uh, the trifecta bison meat he has, you know, is he eating that because he's sponsored by them? It's overcooked. It's well done. It's packaged in plastic. It's frozen. Obviously, the protein quality is compromised. Uh, you know, those egg glands, best supermarket eggs, high omega-6, conventional poultry feed, definitely inflammatory. And you certainly don't want to be eating you know, unrealistically large amounts of eggs every day because you will develop nutrient imbalances. As much as eggs are a nutritious food, you know, you eat a dozen, two dozen of them a day, long term, not healthy. Uh, you know, and that doesn't even include the agrochemical, the pesticide concerns or antibiotic residue that's in the eggs from the chicken's feed. Uh, you know, blackberries could be great if they're organic or locally grown or high quality, but you know, if they're from the supermarket, especially if they're not organic, they're probably riddled with chemicals from the farming practices. And, and the biggest concern about those waffles, which he didn't make himself, is the flour used. It's usually fortified with vitamins and minerals like iron filings. And a lot of people actually get heart palpitations after eating packaged products made with flour because of those iron filings. It damages your liver, can make you very sick. It's not good for you. Even like the organic waffle mix or pancake mixes or the organic waffles from Whole Foods still tend to have those iron filings in them. So for something like waffles, pancakes, you have to make them yourselves with as high quality ingredients as possible, mainly to remove the fortified flour. I mean, to me, that does not look like fresh squeezed orange juice. Uh, at least he has real maple syrup there. But overall, you know, the inflammation can be substantially reduced. Uh, mainly from a chemical perspective and an ingredient quality perspective. Meal number two. So what we got for this meal is 12 ounces of bison patties. We got eight ounces of sweet potatoes, one cup of green beans, and then we'll do uh, one cup of rice on top. So this is meal number two, and I gotta say, it looks delicious. Meal number two is not as bad as meal number one, but still not good. Uh, one thing we didn't mention was those eggs are also estrogen bombs because they're conventional feedlot and any animal product raised in that manner is going to have a significant amount of estrogen. But, you know, with Brian Shaw's supplement routine, extra estrogen in the diet probably doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, you know, we do see the heavily overcooked meat and just in general, you know, the sweet potato, the green beans and the rice are all heavily, heavily cooked food. So, you know, maybe Brian is taking a vitamin C supplement on the side for those antiscorbutic properties. Uh, he didn't specify organic or not. You know, we still have concerns about 
those pesticides and agrochemicals in the food? Again, is he eating this bison from Trifecta because he's sponsored by them? Or is it what he's actually consuming? And the foods he did choose have low digestibility, mainly because of their flavonoid compounds. You know, green beans and sweet potatoes are definitely not nearly as good choices of energy as rices. And there's no real nutritional benefits from having sweet potatoes or green beans due to their lower digestibility. He might as well just eat a bunch more rice. Moving on to meal number three. So this one is a pre-training meal. So what I get for this is, this is one bag of sweet potato fries. We've already cooked those. Um, so I'm actually gonna pack this up and take it on the road with me. So that's why I've got the containers out. Uh, next up, we've got uh, uh, shredded chicken that I've got ready to go uh, right here. We get to add some uh, duck fat to that. So two tablespoons of uh, duck fat. I'll throw that in here, mix it all together. And then four, I guess you get to call it dessert. Now I get a rice crispy treat to top that all off. So I'm gonna get that packed up. Um, I've actually got to head over uh, to treatment here. So I'm gonna knock it out and get it done. All right, so we got the meal ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna head out the door, go get this treatment done, and uh, I will eat this probably in the parking lot right when I get there. There's a pretty common theme to this diet. He's getting in his protein, he's getting in some calories, carbohydrate energy mostly, but the quality of the food is greatly compromised. It's not organic, there's omega-6 concerns, it's heavily, heavily cooked foods, stressing his body's enzymes, you know, is he taking digestive enzymes on the side too? Is he perhaps taking antimicrobials, uh, probiotics to make sure his gut microbiome is healthy? You know, he threw some duck fat in this meal and he's eating Rice Krispie treats. There's far better options for that. You, know, you could have some fatty fish for some omega-3. You could have just Wagyu beef tallow from Frankie's Free Age Meat, which would certainly be a better option. Just higher quality animal products. You know, we did a chewy chocolate chip granola bar recipe video yesterday. You can make your own high quality Rice Krispie treats that are gonna be infinitely healthier for you than that packaged garbage. How is this guy so wealthy in this nice house, so successful, yet he doesn't put a little bit of extra effort into the quality of his diet? Does he not understand? Meal number four, this is my post-training meal. So what we've got going here is uh, we're going to a uh, 60 gram protein shake. As you can see, this is an unmarked container. Very, very excited that this prep, I have been using my own protein so this is a whey isolate, it is delicious, we've been testing it, different versions, and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. So I have been using that. On top of the uh, 60 gram protein shake, I will have a banana, and then uh, with that, I will have a uh, peanut butter and honey sandwich as well. So uh, this is a, uh, a great post-training uh, meal, really convenient, really easy, just mix up the shake and then sit down and uh, have the banana and the peanut butter and honey sandwich. So we're gonna get this blended up and uh, down the hatch. You know, the food quality applies here again. If that was, you know, 100% grass-fed, grass-finished whey protein, which it's not, it would probably be fine. There's chemical concerns, there's estrogenic concerns in the conventional stuff. It's heavily processed. Uh, you know, I don't think the banana was organic and bananas tend to cause leaky gut for a lot of people. Uh, peanut butter and honey sandwich. You know, do you have organic peanut butter? Do you have a naturally fermented sourdough bread? Do you have raw local honey? Do you have the highest quality ingredients? He doesn't, but if you did that, it wouldn't be that horrible. The only concern would be maybe a little extra omega-6 from the peanut butter, but in this scenario, he's dousing his stomach with chemicals and estrogenic metabolites from the whey protein. All right, guys, final meal of the day, meal number five. And this is actually a substitution. I'm not mad about it. As you guys know, uh, for cheat meals, I love pizza. I love cheesecake. It's definitely my go-to when it comes to cheat meals. So what we're doing now with the diet is essentially manipulating everything going into the contest. So tomorrow is another training day for me. Uh, so at this point, normally what this meal would have been is I would have had 
roughly a pound of uh, bison burgers. I would have sweet potatoes, I would have a salad, and then I would have some type of vegetable to go with that. So we stayed pretty clean through the diet uh, leading up to World's Strongest Man, and now we're at the point where we get to manipulate it leading into contest um, preparation, training days, if you will. Um, so we get to see how my body's going to react to all of the phases of the diet leading up. So non-training days, for example, right now the carbs are lower and the uh, the foods are a little bit different. Training days are um, different as well. The, the carbs are higher. Um, you, you know, so there's a lot of different things going on. Uh, we just kind of picked today as an example, but leading into a big training session tomorrow, this is what we're doing. We're gonna see how I respond. And you know, typically when we start throwing in pizza and cheesecake, I feel really good. I respond to that really well. And uh, typically my training sessions are definitely uh, very exciting at this point. So I'm excited to eat this um, to show you guys what we got going. I went with a uh, pepperoni and meatball uh, pizza, then just regular, um, regular, just kind of New York cheesecake which is, uh, can't go wrong with that, obviously. And then uh, just some Coke to wash it down. <laughs> I don't know how this guy can talk intelligently with a straight face while he's drinking Coca-Cola and eating pizza. Uh, again, I don't know if this is a fake day of eating, if this is what he's actually doing. But uh, my first question is, how much fluoride is this guy drinking? You know, does he have a filtration on his water system? He's drinking cola. He's drinking that conventional orange juice. That's definitely a concern we didn't address. Perhaps the chlorine in the water too, destroying gut bacteria, causing oxidative stress. You know, we talked about chemical concerns in his other meals and how the foods are slightly inflammatory, but this is just a whole step up. You know, drinking Coca-Cola, eating pizza, it's substantially more inflammatory. It's full of so much crap. And, and he's saying he feels better when he eats this stuff. That's probably because his diet is too low in fat, too low in caloric energy. Uh, you know, if I was Brian, I would start adding, you know, more fat to his meals in the form of quality animal fats or coconut oil. And I would also start drinking maybe some organic juices, even pasteurized just to get some more energy in the diet, some higher calorically dense foods, as opposed to eating this crappy pizza and drinking uh, soda. As we said with the other meals, he can make higher quality alternatives to this stuff himself. Overall, from a positive and negative perspective, there's definitely so many nutrients he's missing, so many things he can incorporate into his diet just from that perspective. And obviously there's plenty of negatives that he can remove. Uh, at his age, I do think if he did fix his diet and lifestyle perfectly, then he might have another good year or two left. I don't know. What I can certainly say is this diet and this lifestyle that he's currently following, in my opinion, is only like 50 to 60% of what he could be doing. Would that translate directly to his training performance? I would assume so, but you know, it's unfortunate. It's something that we're likely not going to see happen as uh, these guys tend to think that all the drugs and all the supplements they take can kind of cover up negative lifestyle factors. So uh, thank you guys for joining me today. Let me know what you think. Uh, this was made before the World's Strongest Man results, but uh, it's not looking like he's going to be winning anytime soon. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. Uh, if you could please you know, share it on social media, drop a like, leave a comment, all that good stuff.